people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers this morning, George is still upstairs getting dressed. And Liz is in the kitchen talking to Katie, the maid. Oh, Katie, I'm so excited. You know that big benefit review for the Red Cross next week? Yes. Well, George and I are putting on an act. We're representing my club. But Mr. Cooper hates everything about your club. Didn't he put up an awful squawk? He didn't say a word, and I've got everything set except one tiny detail. And what's that? I haven't told him yet. <laughs> but I don't want to be around when you tell him. It strikes me when he gets angry. Oh, now, Katie, George has perfect control of himself these days. He doesn't say a word when he gets mad. He just sits there and turns different colors. That's what I mean. He looks like a rainbow. Yes, and lately he's getting the pot to go with it. Hey, bring a long in here. Oh, I'm coming, Queen Pop. Well, how is my wonderful husband this morning? Give me a kiss. Mm-hmm. Oh, George, you're so handsome and clever and... And charming and cuddly. All right. What do you want this time? Nothing. I just love you, that's all. Hold me tight. Okay. Tighter. 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 Oh, but Liz. Go on. Pretend I'm an old tunnel and save my side room. <laughs> Annie, what are you up to? If you think I have an ulterior motive, I don't even want to talk to you. Oh, honey. I merely wanted your advice about the Red Cross review next week. No. Oh, what's your problem? Well... One of the members of my club volunteered to do an act with her husband. That ought to be nauseating. Hmm. Well, this member is in an awful fix, George. She volunteered without telling her husband about it. She did? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mean he doesn't know anything about it? No. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> I'd like to be there when the poor sucker finds out. <laughs> you will. Uh, see what's so bad about it. All you do if it was your wife, George. Hmm. I'd give her a good swift kick in the pants. You wouldn't. <laughs> oh, just think of that poor devil having to get up and make a fool of himself. <laughs> Who is it, Liz? <laughs> you. Oh. Well, at least you're a man of your word. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding, Liz. You you didn't really mean that, did you? Now, wait till I get out of range. Yes, George, I did. But why? You know, if there's one thing I hate more than that club of yours, it's amateur theatrical. But it's for the Red Cross, George, and you know the wonderful work they do helping disaster victims and, and promoting health and safety. Yeah, I know, dear, and we'll give them a big contribution, just as everyone should, but I refuse to get up there and look silly. <laughs> and crying won't get you any place. But you wouldn't look silly, George. You're so smart and so clever. I'll leave that stuff to the idiots who put on lady hats at parties. Look at all the stage experience you've had. What about the musicals you did at college? You had the lead in the senior show, didn't you? No, well, I sang a few numbers. Oh, I'll never forget it. There you were in your green and white blazer and your straw hat and boo 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 Liz, you tricked me. Hey, George, Joseph made a comeback. Why not you? <laughs> boola, boola, boo. No, Liz, I'm not going to do it. Well, you just don't remember how great you were, George. No. <laughs> and you tried that already. Uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, all right for you, George Cooper. <laughs> Did you send for me, Mr. Atterbury? Yes, yes, Cooper. Come in. Come in, boy. Uh, how long have you been with the bank, Cooper? Uh, Fourteen years. And you work all the way up to fifth vice president. Remarkable. Thank you. Well, George, I have a job that's worthy of you, boy. Yeah, what, sir? You're going to represent the bank in a large public relations project, boy. Oh, boy. Are you making fun of me? Uh, no. Oh. Well, uh, there's a big review being given for the Red Cross next week. And I thought you and Liz could work up a little song and dance routine. Oh, Mr. Atterbury, I, I, I simply can't. Cooper, boy. <laughs> well, why did you choose me anyway? Because you have talent. You're a natural, boy. By the other night at Anderson's party, you were a scream the way you wore those ladies' hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
dear, Mr. Atterbury, I'm sorry. I, I just can't do it. You'll do it or I'll bust you to six, Vice President. You wouldn't? Wouldn't I? I'll bust you to office, boy. Office boy! <laughs> With the sixth Vice President, he's the office boy. <laughs> I'll give you three. One, two... All right, Mr. Atterbury, you talked me into it. Good boy, boy. I'm sorry, but that's the way it has to be. Goodbye. Well, that's it, Katie. I told my club we couldn't do the act. Isn't there some way you can change Mr. Cooper's mind? Nope. I gave him a kiss that lasted ten minutes, and he still said no. Well, maybe a real good dinner will do with the trick. Katie, if the heavy artillery didn't work, what good's the cat pistol? <laughs> oh, when George Cooper says no, he means it. No business like no business like no business I know. Hiya, Liz. Hiya, Ben. <laughs> Out of the old pipe down, huh? I like to stand a little Drano. <laughs> What's the matter with you, George? Nothing, honey. I've just been thinking. You were right this morning when you said we could all pitch in and help out the Red Cross. You mean you'll do the act with me? Yes, sir. And I've even worked out a wonderful act for us. Starring you, of course. Oh, well, we could both be in it equally. Ah, oh, no. Listen, I'm no fool. You're the one they look at, the good-looking girl. Well, thanks, but I think that we now, should Now, here, I, I've got it all written down, see? Uh -huh. uh, we'll open with a song. Mm -hmm. Then what the strings of my heart. Oh, I love this number. Good. Uh, now, come over to the piano and let's see how our voices sound together. Mm -hmm. uh, you sing the part that's on the line. Okay. <laughs> Dear, when you smiled at me, I heard a melody. It haunted me from the start. Something inside of me started a symphony. Then went the thrill. I still recall as well. I guess I always will. I hope we'll never depart. Dear, with your lips to mine, a rhapsody divine. Then went the Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, Frankie boy. <laughs> What's the matter? I lost my plate. <laughs> this is a great part you gave me. Do you think my voice will hold up? But baby, don't you see? You're the star of this song. I am? It means nothing without you. It doesn't? Of course not. Now, we never know how the strings of my heart go until you tell it. Then we know they zing. And the whole thing zings, if you ask me. <laughs> All right, we'll get another open song. In the meantime, uh, let's work on this boss comedy material I've prepared. <clears throat> All right, let's hear this boss comedy material. Okay. Now, <clears throat> after one chorus of the song, I click this little clicker. What? Click my clicker like this. Oh. And, and we stop. Mm -hmm. I say, hiya, Liz. And you come right back with, Hiya, George! Hmm? Well, now, there's a clever opening. <laughs> now, Liz. All right. Hiya, George! Hmm. Then after I wait for a laugh, what do I say? Here's your step. Hiya, Liz! Hiya, George! You know, a tramp came up to me and said he hadn't had a bite in days. What did you do? I did it. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Uh, did you hear about... No, 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 that's mine. Oh. <clears throat> uh, did you hear about the big fire down at the shoe factory? What happened? Two hundred souls were lost. <laughs> well, at least there'll be one person laughing mm. at it. Uh, you know, there are two things I... No, can't... no, 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 that's my line. Oh. <clears throat> you know, there are two things I can't... Wait a minute, wait a minute, brother. You tell all the jokes so far I haven't had a thing to say. I'm Liz Cooper, not Harpo Mark. <laughs> Now, dear, every comedian has to have a straight man. Well, couldn't I be just a little crooked now and then? <laughs> but the straight man is the backbone of the comedy team. After all, what would Amos do without Andy? What would Lum do without Abby? They could form a new team, Lum and Amos. <laughs> oh, well, how will it look, George? After all, we're representing my club. Well, uh, Liz, I, I wanted to speak to you about that, uh... Mr. Atterbury called me in today, and, uh, well, he, he wanted us to represent the bank. Oh, I get it. When I want to do it, it's a lot of silly nonsense. When Atterbury wants you to do it, there's no business like show business. 
Oh, now, Liz, don't be like that. Remember, the show must go on. Well, it can go on without me. But I need a partner. What can I do? Get Edgar Bergen to help you. You can work sitting down. <laughs> All right. If you're going to be that way, I'll just have to get one of the girls down at the bank to be my partner. Oh, go ahead. I've seen those girls down at the bank. There isn't a woman there who has one zing left in her. <laughs> go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> Let me get the door, Katie. It's George's new song and dance partner. I want to take a look at the old fuddy duddy. All right, Mrs. Keith. Yes? Hello there. I'm Miss Williams. The bank sent me out. <laughs> this is C21 Bundy, isn't it? Sorry, wrong number. Goodbye. I just want This is the address they gave me. Doesn't Mr. Cooper fit here? Well, he lives here, but you just missed him. He, he left on a trip to South America. Oh. He's here. Oh, yes, well, goodbye. Well, hello, Miss Williams. Come on in. Why, Mrs. Cooper, I thought you and South... George, welcome home! <laughs> what? I only went out to put the car in the garage. Well, you said he went to South America. Well, I always get confused. Our car is a real. <laughs> I was supposed to be here tonight, wasn't I, Mr. Cooper? Well, I certainly... Uh, come inside where we can be alone and we'll start rehearsing. Anything you say, Mr. Cooper. Oh, why don't you call me Joe? Mrs. Cooper, did you see the old fuddy daddy? Oh, Katie. Oh, what's the matter? I made a terrible mistake, Katie. Her fuddy isn't daddy at all. They've been in there an hour together. Aren't you worried about your husband? Why, Katie, certainly not. Well, don't you wonder what they're doing? Katie, I want you to know I trust my husband implicitly. And why are you standing on that chair and kicking in the tantrum? <laughs> I'm not kicking in the tantrum. I'm dusting. <laughs> Katie, why do you suppose they're so quiet in there? I don't know. How are they telling those jokes by sign language? <laughs> if they just make some noise, anything, I'd feel better. <laughs> do you feel better? <laughs> Oh, George knows I'm out here, and he's just doing that for my benefit. I know him. Actually, Katie, he's miserable. <laughs> Listen to him laughing through his tears. <laughs> well, I, I think I'll just open the door a pinky crack just to give him some air. All right, Miss Williams. Uh, now that you've memorized it, try that straight. Oh, you're so handsome. Don't mean you're all in this kiss. I'm going in there, Katie. Hand me that bowl of soup. But, but he said it was just a straight line. Well, that straight line sounds like the shortest distance between two points. This I gotta see. Well, that's good, Miss Whitney. Now, I take you in my arms, bend you backwards and kiss me. Now, try that line again. Take me in your arms and kiss me. My Anybody God. want an apple? Uh, no, thanks, Blair. Go ahead, Miss Take me in your arms and kiss me. My God. Do you want an apple, Miss Williams? No, thanks. Look, Liz, we're trying to rehearse. Well, I thought you might be hungry. Uh, wouldn't you like a piece of garlic or something? <laughs> Liz, you can stay here and watch if you want, but we are not hungry. Understand? Yes, sir. Take me in your arms and kiss me. My God. Cigar, cigarette, smoke, anyone? Liz. Cigar, Miss Williams? Now, stop that, Liz. What are you trying to do? I think we'd better eliminate the kiss, Mr. Cooper. Mrs. Cooper's a little jealous. Me? Jealous? Ha! I'm just trying to protect him. The last time he kissed a girl on stage, he got hurt. Hurt? Yes, his glasses got steamed up and he fell in the orchestra pit. <laughs> Liz, you're, you're, you're being silly, but if you wanted to take this kissing bit out of the act, well, we'll just... Whatever. Give you that idea. Please, George, you don't really think I'm jealous. Well, you, you seem to... Why should I care if you want to get up there and kiss an older woman? Now, wait a minute. You don't have to get nasty with me, Mrs. Cooper. I'm not going to steal your son away. <laughs> My son. Listen, you poor man's Marjorie Maine. Start anything and I'll block your eyes and match your hair. My hair is red. I'm talking about the roots. Now stop it, stop it, both of you. Liz, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. 
Miss Williams is a guest in our house. Well, I offered her an apple and a cigar. <laughs> well, I've got to be leaving. I must say, I never saw anyone so jealous. I'm surprised you let your husband go to work, Mrs. Cooper. How do you keep the secretary from sitting on his lap? I shop in his knees every morning. <laughs> Cooper, who's that handsome man in the living room? Well, Katie, I made such a fool of myself last night that I decided to fight fire with fire. That handsome man in the living room would set fire to anyone. <laughs> well, his name is Jerry Moore, and I'm going to rehearse a love scene with him. And when George sees us, he'll be so jealous he'll get rid of Miss Williams and ask me to do his act with him. I hope you're right. Oh, I know George. Now, you see. Well, good luck to you. George! Hmm? Hey, yes, sir. I've decided to be in the review after all. A tall, tall, dark, handsome man is going to do a, a passionate love scene with me. Good. A real passionate love scene. No, that's fine. Now, George, don't lose your temper. <laughs> what? Oh, you're so jealous. Do you mind if we rehearse in here? Well, I don't care where you rehearse. Temper, temper. Mm. Come in, Gerald. George, this is Gerald Moore. Jerry! George, how are you? My God, I haven't seen you in a long time. You know each other? Know each other? We were fraternity brothers. Rack-a-tack-a-poo-poo, rack-a-tack-a-putt. Yippee-yippee-yay, hooray for us. Suck them, skin them, roll them in the soul. Try to make a, try to make a, go, go, go. Yay! <laughs> well, you lost my raccoon coat. <laughs> if you're ready, Jerry, let's start the scene. Yeah, I'll sit over here out of the way. You don't mind him. He's insanely jealous. Mm. Go right in. Oh, my darling. I love you. I love you, too. Kiss me. Yeah. Yeah, tell kiss me. On the eyes. On the mouth. On the throat. Take me, my love. I'm yours. This is the moment I've dreamed of. When our hearts meet. And our souls meet. Bless your mind. All mine. I think he's running a butcher shop. <laughs> oh, my beloved. Let me melt into your arms. Did you ever buy anything from me? What? Come to me, darling. Darling, every fiber of my being is tingling with ecstasy. I love you. A pound of liver. Oh. What's the matter, Mrs. Cooper? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. What do you think you're holding? Bill Anderson or a pound of liver? Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let's try it again. Oh, huh? forget it. No, I, I think you ought to do the act, Liz. It's very funny. Funny? Sure. Well, he's right, Mrs. Cooper. It'll get a million laughs. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've seen in years. <laughs> Everybody oh, goes. that's right. Go ahead. direct, but to dress up in costume and come down here to the theater anyway. George doesn't know it, Katie, but I'm going to be his partner, and you watch and see who gets the laugh. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, pardon me, what act is on the stage now? Evelyn and her magic kazoo. Oh. <laughs> Next is George Cooper and Marilyn Williams. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's Miss Williams now. What are you going to do about her? Just what? Oh, uh, Miss Williams, George wants to see you. Oh, really? Where is he? Oh, right in the dressing room. Oh, what is it, Mr. Cooper? Oh, that'll take oh, care of you for a while. Fine, Mrs. Cooper, you locked her in the dressing room. Yeah, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> now, where's George? Oh, there he is in the ring. Hi, George. Hi, Liz. Uh, you haven't seen Miss Williams, have you? Liz, what are you doing in that costume? Well, Miss Williams asked me to tell you she couldn't make it, George. I'm going to take her place. No, you, you can't do it. You don't even know what the routine is. Yes, I do. I've been listening to you rehearse. You're on that, Cooper. Oh, Liz, are you sure you know what to say? Yes. yes. Now, remember, I say the first line, yeah. and then you answer me, yeah, and then I give the joke. George, you're going to be surprised at the way I say my line. Come on, Cooper. Come on. We're waiting. Mm, well, I guess there's nothing else to do. That's our introduction. Here we go. Okay. You all have to live, but we gallop to live, and I'll all have to live, 
Hello, George. Hi, Liz. You know, a tramp came up to me and said he hadn't had a bite in days. What'd you do, bite him? I did. Say, Liz, did you hear about the big fire at the shoe factory? I bet some heel started it. Shoe high. <laughs> no, Liz, you're supposed to say what happened. Huh? What happened? 200 souls were lost. Oh. <laughs> You make my cheery when you call me cheery for down where the bluegrass grows. Well, go ahead, Mr. Bone. I'm taking no chances with you this time. I'm telling a joke you never heard of before. I know a girl who's so dumb she thinks the football coach has four wheels. <laughs> How many wheels does it have? <laughs> favorite husband has been presented to the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.